I'm going to tell you about the best Jumpstart reprints. This is Chad and welcome to the Bomb New Cards. I'm going to tell you about the top 10 reprints for the Oathbreaker format. This video is part of a De Bomb New Cards series for Jumpstart. Please check out the playlist. If it's your first time here, I make Magic the Gathering Oathbreaker content. If that's what you're into, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're looking for any of the cards I talk about in this video, check out my LGS Mythic Games. This list is based on value, usefulness, and potential effect on our format. Number 10. We're getting a re reprint in white of Lynn Vale, Keeper of Silence. She costs 2 and 2 white. She's a 3-4 flying creature. Activated abilities of creatures our opponents control can't be activated. This kind of hate bear effect that can keep down certain types of combo decks or dangerous activated abilities is very useful for white stacks and white prison style decks. Anytime you kind of want to pillow fort or just keep your opponents from having advantage, Lynn Vale is going to be useful to you. I would suggest her in a Dovin Bond deck since he often usually comes with prison type effects on each printing as a planeswalker, but it could also make appearances in a Sarah deck if given the angel sub theme and type. Number nine, dual caster mage. This one's pretty low on the list because while as it is useful, it's not useful in a whole bevy of decks and it doesn't have a high value. So this is one you could probably pick up. Dual caster mage costs one and two red. It has flash, it's a two two. And when it enters the battlefield, you get the copy target instant or sorcery spell and choose new targets for the copy. This type of copy ability printed on a creature can be very useful and can have some Swiss Army-like ability in your decks. For one, in a mono red deck, it could suddenly become a counterspell to counter your opponent's counterspell. Or you can copy a life gain, combat trick, or something else that comes up during gameplay. Probably the most notable thing about Dual Caster Mage is it sees the most play when played alongside uh, spells that would allow you to copy target creature. Because what you do is you choose, uh, you know, I won't go into the combat in this video, I'll cover it in a different video. Number eight, Hell Rider. For two and two red, he's a three, three fast, hasty devil. Whenever a creature you control attacks, Hell Rider deals one damage to target player or planeswalker it's attacking. I like guaranteed damage in red. If you've got a small army and you start to get afraid of swinging in and you're in an aggro deck, that's a problem. This helps mitigate this problem. This is an excellent card for go wide strategies where you just have a lot of attacking creatures. It's good for token creature strategies in red, and I'll be damned if it shouldn't see a play in most Kiki Jiki or Cranko Mob Boss stacks. I would suggest putting him for a flavor win into the War of the Spark Tybalt deck. <clears throat> Number seven, Kyra the Great Glass Spinner. Costs one and two blue. It's a two two legendary creature spirit. It has flying. Creatures you control have Whenever this creature becomes target of spell or ability, counter that spell or ability. This is great. I have seen how it can just stop opponents from interacting with you. I know that's kind of bad because you do want to play with your opponents, not by yourself, but any spell they would use to destroy or remove a creature, they're going to turn on somebody else once this is in play on your board. Now, part of the reason this is at seven and not lower on the list for its ability to just mass protect your whole army, including itself, is that you then also cannot target your creatures uh, with, with a spell. Or if you want to target your creatures with a spell, you have to use two spells a turn just to get whatever shenanigans you're trying to get off. So that is something to be aware of when you're building a Kyra deck or a deck with Kyra in it, I should say. I feel like this can slot into a lot of things just because of its ability to broad stroke protect a whole bunch of creatures. Number six, Shurdred, the Whispering One. For five and two black, you get a six, six legendary creature, Praetor. It has Swamp Walk. At the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, sacrifice a creature. So this is a pretty amazing card. I've actually played against this in some EDH decks. In Oathbreaker, it's not quite as good because high mana costs are sometimes a place we don't get to 
in our format, you know. But in the event you do, this can be a very oppressive effect because it guarantees that it's going to start to put you ahead in board position by getting you creatures back and by making sure your opponents can't keep up and making sure they have to keep sacking creatures. For the vast majority of black decks, this is going to be useful. And I'm never going to say no to an evasive ability like Swamp Walk. Number five. Reanimate. Probably the main card most reanimator decks are named after. It costs one black. You put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control and you lose life equal to its converted mana cost. This will see play in dredge decks, self mill decks, and other kind of reanimator strategies very easily. It's definitely the cheapest and most affordable trick for getting a huge creature that you purposely discarded or put into your graveyard directly into play so early in the game it'll make your opponent's head spin. It would make an excellent signature spell on low cost planeswalkers. There's no sense in hiding this spell behind a planeswalker you can't get out early. So that is my suggestion for reanimate. Number four, Duelist Heritage. This one probably doesn't deserve a spot this high up the list, but I just looked at this card and kind of fell in love. For two and a white, it's an enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike till end of turn. This is a combat trick you don't have to play. You play this once, it's an enchantment, it's pretty well protected. White likes effects like this, and white red with double strike, or white green, any, any color will enjoy giving its creature double strike. But what is way more fun about this card is giving your opponent's creatures double strike. And that is really cool because you can use that as a moment to politic with your opponents. Say, if you don't attack me, I'll make sure you do double damage against so-and-so, or I'll give a double strike and then that way your creature won't die because of first strike damage. So this is a really interesting card and I enjoy it. Number three. Exquisite Blood for 4 and a black. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much life. This is a great effect. This pretty much gives every one of your cards that would have life lost on it, and all combat damage and everything you do now has lifelink. If any permanent you're running already has lifelink, it kind of doubles up that. The life gain can put you way far ahead. This card combos with other cards that say essentially the opposite, where whenever, you're, whenever you gain life, your opponent loses life, and then it goes infinite and all your opponents lose, and that's game. It would go real good in a white-black Soren deck. It would, it basically, any Orzhov deck that is already looking at heavy life gain would be real good. There are one or two mono-black decks, like a Liliana discard deck that has Megrim and stuff in it, that I think it would be funny to see in, maybe not the best place. Its mana cost is a little high, but this is one of those cards where I feel like we can get there. And as an enchantment, again, it's pretty well protected. Number two, it's interesting to see a Rhystic Study reprint. I think this is a card a lot of people can't afford, so if they opened it up in a pack, I think they would be very happy. It can be frustrating at the table for a player to always be asking you, are you gonna pay the one for that? But this is an amazing blue card draw advantage in engine. So I would certainly say it is worth picking up. This can slot into basically any blue decks, telling you exactly which you know archetype or planeswalker it's good for. It's kind of a waste of time. And finally, we have Crater Hoof Behemoth. This monster of a green creature is a little expensive mana-wise, but hear me out. Green is a color that can ramp to infinity. And since green is so good at generating that mana, this creature has found itself a win condition in almost any deck that will play it. Any green deck running large creatures or go wide strategies or token strategies can certainly love this because growing your entire army so big out of nowhere often just ends the game right there. I also enjoy it in a Domery Raid deck because he can pump all of your army as well if you're running uh, either the, the one out of War of the Spark where he just automatically gives your creatures an Anthem effect or if you're running the one where his ultimate ability is to give all your creatures its haste, double strike, and trample. Those are the top 10 cards I would choose out of Jumpstart to be the best reprints. If you have a different opinion of what reprints are best in the set, please let me know in the comments below. Also, Jumpstart is kind of for new players, so if my veteran players could give the new players tips in the comments below, things they think are important or they should look out for in Jumpstart, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by. I couldn't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. I hope this video blew your mind.